What's up, y'all? Got a banger from men only. Let's get straight into it. Tell me why is it so challenging to find emotionally intelligent, available men? No, I think they're everywhere. I just think you're looking in the wrong places. Keep it a buck. I'm starting to think like I'm too picky. And you are. By this rate, baby, I think I'm going to be single for a long time. And that's okay. Like, I love myself. And if that's okay, then why are you on TikTok complaining about it? Make it make sense. I really do need someone that's going to be obsessed with me in a healthy way, just the way I feel about myself. I love me, so you should love me too. Stupid. It's funny how some women ask. Bro, this is so ridiculous. She really thinks a man's supposed to come in and be absolutely obsessed with her. This is wild to me. Ain't nobody trying to come in and be obsessed with you. Emotionally and the thing, the thing is, emotionally intelligent men avoid these women like the plague because these women are succubus. They suck you dry. And marriageable. It's crazy to me, bro. It's about stations, older gen, by and fall squarely on women who refuse to. Yo, what is up with men? And I know this is always a topic. And what specific topic is this video going to be about? Here, but I'm generally speaking about why do men have a hard time helping women? They don't have a hard time helping women, what? but they've been told to leave women alone. Something that I have observed, not only in my personal life, but literally in the outside world, because I'm a watcher. Men will stand there. The women will have all the bags, the kids, the suitcases, the luggage. We should be doing everything. He's just standing there. I because I paid for everything. Shouldn't you have to carry something if I paid for everything? Come on now. Did she ask for help? They'll just be standing there, like, just watching the woman suffer as if it brings them some kind of pleasure. From my perspective, it looks like that, because I'll just be looking, and I'm just like, anybody would help that woman right now. Why are you just standing there? Y'all are the men? I guess some women do need men after all, if for nothing more than to carry heavy objects. But I guess one didn't take into consideration that a lot of men stopped helping women, because whenever they do... Many times they're often told that they're not doing it right, they're doing it wrong, and the woman will just redo it anyway after making the man feel about one inch tall. Gee, I can't imagine why more men wouldn't want to help out. I've noticed that these... That's so true though, dude. Chad, have you ever gone through that where like, you help a girl do something, and it's like, she gets mad at you for helping do it because you did it the wrong way? Like, dude, that, I see a lot of men go through that. That's why they just avoid helping in general because they're like, why would I even do it? Because you're going to grill me either way because I'm not doing it to your standards. Um, I, I see I see this happen all the time with men. It's absolutely brutal. And I, and I don't blame them for, like, not wanting to help anymore. Say something that's really cliche. I know people say this all the time. There's thousands of fucking songs written about it. There's hundreds of movies made about it. But breakups are so weird. You literally go... From talking to someone every day to then nothing. Poof. They're gone. Huh? What? Where'd you go? Love it when a woman talks about her bop lore. She's a runner. She's a track star. Nothing better. They never existed. It's like they never existed. You literally talk to someone, build a foundation with them. You love them. You kiss them. You touch them. You miss them. You want to be with them and see them and laugh with them and do all these things. And then one day you both decide it doesn't work and then it's done. And then you literally don't talk to them ever again. Or maybe Bro, here's my hot take on this. I, I never think breakups can be mutual. Chat, let me know. Here's the reason why. Two people would have to think the same exact thing at the same exact time for it to be completely mutual. Hear me out. The only way a breakup can actually be mutual is if you're looking at each other and you go, all right, tell me what you're thinking. One, two, three. We want to break up. That's how it could be mutual. But even then, somebody probably thought about it sooner. So breakups are never mutual. What When people say breakups are mutual, basically the, uh, the person that broke up with you gaslit you to say, yeah, this was a this was a breakup that was mutual. That's what they do. Breakups are never mutual. Somebody always thought about it first. Chat, let me know if you agree. But there, there's no such thing as a mutual breakup. Somebody broke up with you, and that is what it is. Like, it, it's impossible for it to be mutual. Literally impossible for it to be mutual. It could never happen. It means two people are thinking the same exact thing at the same exact time, and you both vocalize it at the same exact second. It's impossible. Maybe you do. You stay friends. I don't know your situation, but I can't be friends with my exes. That's just fucking weird. But like, what? The yeah, fuck? friends with exes is a yeah, big a big one. Chat. Would you ever do that? Absolutely not. I always told girls like, if we're done, you're never gonna hear from me again. Fuck. 
And it's not like you can do that with your friend. Like you can't talk to your friends the same way that you talk to your intimate partner. It's just, it is completely different. I don't care what anyone says. Sure, I talk to my girlfriends about stuff that I probably wouldn't talk to my boyfriend about with, but it's still different. There's like- It's probably why he broke up with you. It's because you were talking to them about things you shouldn't have been talking to him about. I've noticed there's a lot of, a lot of times girls will straight up like air out all their dirty laundry to their girlfriends. And basically these girlfriends end up hating the boyfriend because she's telling, she's only telling them the bad things that you do. She's never like- like, you know, saying that you're doing well. She's always saying of, of the, she's always talking about the things you're doing bad. This fucking deep connection that you have with an intimate partner and then you just can't get that back. And then you have to fucking date again, eventually. And fucking language, honey. Good Lord. It's like five F bombs. Goodness gracious. Oh, all over. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. I'm Stop picking men that don't want to be in long-term relationships. It seems like the common denominator here is you, so you should take some accountability and say, you know what, maybe I'm picking bad men. Let's see if she ever gets to that part, though. 27 and I'm exhausted. Ooh, 27? I, I mean, she looks good for her age. I want to fucking do that again, okay? I'm getting desensitized over the years. Trauma, baggage. It's fucking heartbreak. Yes, I'm sad, I'm devastated, but I'm fucking angry that it keeps happening. I'm so angry, and I'm over it, and like... Like I said, like, you talk to them every day, and then you just stop talking to them, and it's like, weird, what? What? And then you have to mute their stories, mute their posts, maybe maybe even block them? Because it fucking kills you. It kills me. It kills me. To think about my ex-boyfriend finding someone new. It breaks Being my heart. Happy. But it just didn't work. And now we just don't talk anymore. And I was just like, what? Where'd you go? It's devastating. It's tragic. If you're going through it. Let's go through it together. I was about to say, let's, get, let, let's go through it together, boo-boo. Let's do it together. Let's join. Let's join hands and I'll sing the single girl song. The sadness. <laughs> it's like Katniss Everdeen from, uh, what is it? What is it? Hunger Games? It's sadness Everdeen. <laughs> but this is the thing with these women, dude. It's like the common denominator is you. You went about picking a man that probably told you Maybe from the jump, if not from the jump, you probably saw some signs where he didn't really want to be with you long term. A guy that didn't see you as, you know, maybe his life partner. And it's probably from the things that you were doing. I, I, I used to work for a chick that was, um, she was like, I think she was around my age at a larger company. And she had dated this guy for like four years and he had never wifed her up. And she was like, what's wrong with him? I'm like, no, no, no. What's wrong with you? Men are simple. If they see you as a potential wife and as a potential mother, they will wife you up pretty quick. But the thing is, you weren't showing, you weren't exhibiting the right things. This is why that, this is why he nexted you and was like, you know what? I, I, I don't really see myself with you. I see myself with another woman. And that's why I always say, don't let your girlfriend stop you from finding your wife. And a lot of ladies do the same thing. Don't let your boyfriend get in the way of finding your husband. But the thing is, with these women, they don't do as well with all the trauma and the baggage and the mileage. Us men, we do much better because it's the difference between like a master key and a lock that's easy to open, like a master key is a good is a good key. But a, a lock that opens with many keys is just a crappy lock. Um, so that's the big difference. And guys that get a lot of play, we're the master key. But ladies that get a lot of play, you're just a crappy lock, honey. I'm sorry. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. Since we moved in together, I have woken up to a text message that says, Good morning, my love. I hope you have an amazing day. The only day I don't get this is on Sunday because he's off. Also, every morning he kisses me on my forehead. It's not anything crazy, but... Dude, this is why I say don't do these little things. There's nothing that I do every day for Cass because... <sighs> women are so hypergamous, they start to expect it. And then when you don't do it, then they get upset. Because they have this expectation. And when expectations don't get met, people get upset. That's why I don't write cute little notes on the fridge. I don't text her when she's out. I don't call her and say something. Like, I might check in every once in a while, but I don't do these little cutesy things. A kiss on the forehead and the tuck in and the, I love you so much, baby, and you're so great. Like, don't do any of that stuff. They want it, but then when they when, then when you do it, they want you to do it constantly. And then they want you to compound other things. And she's like, well, well I know you kissed me on my forehead, but... but you don't hold my hand and then kiss my hand and then after that you have to brush my hair and then after that you have to chuck me in. Like, don't do any of that stuff. They want it, but they really don't want it. It's like enough to not wake me up too much, but just a little bit to know like, I love you. So what did I get this morning? Absolutely nothing. Not because, and, th and this is, this is why you don't do this. Exhibit A. 
text message, not a kiss, not a phone call, not a notification, not a pat on the shoulder. Who hurt you? What did I do to you? Are we fighting? Are you mad at me? Do you not love me anymore? I love it. Are we not married? Are we divorced? Where is the heck to a girl when you need her? No, in all seriousness, it's not because he just suddenly doesn't love you. It's most likely because he was stressed or running late, but there is a- Or, I almost bet you it's because he was doing that so much and you thought it was a regular schmeg and you stopped appreciating it. And men want to feel respected and women want to be loved. In a relationship, if a guy's doing something for a girl, and after a while she doesn't so she doesn't show appreciation for whatever we're doing, whether it's a task, whether it's words of affirmation, whether it's you know quality time, gifts, acts of service, whether it's something like that, and a woman stops showing appreciation, us as men we start feeling disrespected. And let me know if you agree with this chat. But as soon as a man starts feeling disrespected, he shuts off and he says, "You know what? I can go find another you in a minute. I can go find another chick that actually respects me." That's why men will go cheat on their wives or go cheat on their girls with a girl that's uglier just because the new girl gives him a, a slice of peace. Gives him a slice of peace and the other girl was a piece of the problem. Respect is big with men. And chat, let me know. Do you agree with that? Men want respect and women want love. I think that's what it is at, the, at its bare bones. He was probably doing it over and over and over and you weren't showing him the appreciation, which therefore he didn't feel respected, which is why I stopped doing it slight chance that maybe he's upset at you and if that's the case the best question to ask yourself is not what have you done to him it's what haven't you been doing for him damn maybe we do need to hock to a girl all right let's talk about something maybe real. we do need to hock to a girl no we don't need to hock to a girl um so it's about feeling maybe the men maybe the men only guys yapping on that one he usually doesn't talk that much on these these videos, so I'm kind of surprised. Um, but he talks much slower than I do. I talk really fast. I have a question for men. Because I'm curious. I'm just curious. Okay. How is it that you can find a woman attractive online? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You look at her pictures. You read her profile. Something catches your eye. And you reach out. And you message her. Um, then she sees that you've messaged A lot of day with these modern women, the only thing the eye is catching is pink eye. <laughs> <laughs> that was crappy. That was, that was horrible. She messages you back and you start talking back and forth and things are going well. Okay. And then all of a sudden it's, hey, let's go. Let's meet for a drink. Right. Okay. okay, sure. So let's meet for a drink. You go for a drink. You're laughing. You're talking. You're having a good time. Um, everything's going well. You're getting to know each other a little bit better. Okay. Um, and every. I love it when a woman gets to the point. <laughs> It's probably my favorite part of all these rambling videos. That he says I like, everything I say he likes. End of the night comes and you have this amazing kiss. Like an amazing kiss. There's no insinuation that he wants sex, so you don't even offer sex. But you have a really nice kiss. Then you each go your own ways. And the next day, you, meaning me, becomes a piece of shit. A piece of shit that it's not even worth a text message anymore or even a response to a text message Stupid. or even to read my text message. All of a sudden, I've become disgusting. Hmm. I'm just... Have you been told that you're feeling disgusting or are you just assuming that and insinuating that? Because most of the time when you assume, chat, I'm pretty sure we all know what happens when you assume. It makes an ass out of you and me. Stop assuming things. Maybe he was busy. Maybe maybe a family member got hurt and he had to, you know, go deal with something. Maybe he had to go to work. You know, maybe it was just one date and he's playing it cool. Like, stop. You're reading into it too much. Just curious. Like, why? Why? Is it because you're dating 600 other women? Well, so what? Date those fucking women. I don't give a shit. But at least have the courtesy and the decency to be a grown up and say, hey, you know I what? I love it. Not really into you. Not catching your vibe. Is that so hard to do? Fucking coward. This usually happens only- uh, Dude, I love it so much. The shame, insult, guilt, and the need to be right. Like, they have to shame these men so much. Here's the problem with women like this, though, is they don't realize that we don't owe you anything. <laughs> we owe you nothing. This is when these women get ghosted. These men don't text them back. We don't owe you anything. We owe you nothing. Zilch, zero, nada. We don't owe you anything. Stop acting like you're owed things. It is what it is. 
Stop worrying about what he's doing or not doing when you guys had one freaking date. You had one date. But you guys had one date. Why are you tripping so hard? But I see women do this all the time where they really think that another man owes them an explanation of why they ghosted them. A man doesn't owe you anything. This is that whole entitlement that I talk about, bro. These women are so entitled that they really think a man needs to go out of his way and explain why he doesn't like her. That's not my job. I'm hoping that the ghosting does just enough. We went out on one date. What do you, what do you, are, why are you so entitled from what you need from me? It was one date. What I always tell women, um, cause Cass had a friend that was going through something similar to this. And I, I go, why don't you message him? Aren't relationships two way streets? You're not as young as you once were. Once was. You're not the young, youthful woman that you were. So like your value's a little bit lower. So how about this? Why don't you actually hit him up? Most guys would love it if a girl actually hit them up after a date. Chat, let me know. We got a lot of men that watch. If you went out on a date with a chick, and then afterwards, like the next day, she messaged you first, wouldn't that make you feel good? Personally, it would make me feel great. Us as men, we had to. I had to come pick you up. I had to take you on a date. I had to pay for the date. I had to initiate the kiss. I had to do all of this, like, initiating. It'd be nice to get a little bit of reciprocation. And this chick right here talking all this noise, it's like, honey, did you show any reciprocation? He gave you all this effort. And I mean, she's okay. She's she's mid at best. You know what I'm saying? You think looking like this, you ain't got to put up no effort? You got to put up some effort, boo-boo. Equality. And the fact that a lot of these women think they don't even need to put up any effort is absolutely wild to me. You absolutely have to put up some effort. You have to put up effort because the thing is your value is a lot lower now that you're a lot older. Um, I want to show you guys a clip from Twitter and then we're going to jump into the Reddit. I saw this clip and about ro I, was at, I was at the gym this morning. This had me rolling, bro. What Americans imagine doing it with a British person is like, oh, yeah, nice one, mate. Go on. You got some proper nice cockles, ain't ya? <laughs> oh, right. My Yorkshire pudding ruined me like they ruined London in the Blitz. Yeah, that's it, mate. Oh. <laughs> Do it for Sean Bean. Yeah. Who's Do that? it for Sean Bean. Sean Bean is watching us over there in the corner eating a pepperami. Don't let him down, mate. Do it for him. Oh, yeah. That's it. That's it. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. Go on, son. Go on, lad. Go on, lad. Go on, lad. Go on, lad. Oh, crumpets. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that about died, bro. Go on, lad. Go on, lad. Go on, lad. Um, let's see here. What do we got? This is from DesX Toxic Masculinity Talk. Let's get in here. Talk. Um, this is a long form suggestion. So we'll, we'll, we'll do a little bit of this. Do a little bit of that. Toxic masculinity. You don't know what that is. I don't think, th I don't think there's such a thing. Oh, Lord. Oh. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> thing is, if toxic masculinity exists, then that means toxic femininity exists. Chat, do you agree? He wants well, let me, into debates right now. It's too late. Let me to get into this. Let me no, we can get into it. Let me qualify my statement a bit here. So I don't believe in adding toxic before the term masculinity or before the term femininity. There are just toxic people. I don't believe I don't Like when don't, Amber turned I mean Amber Heard, <laughs> wouldn't she be toxic femininity in that regard? Lying about what Johnny Depp did, taking him to court, defaming him. I'm pretty sure that's pretty toxic, but she's just a toxic person. Don't subscribe to this idea of toxic masculinity. There are toxic men, there are toxic women, there are toxic Thanks. people. Mm -hmm. you, do you disagree? I do, because toxic masculinity is a term for the toxic men that utilize it. Is there toxic femininity? Is that the thing? Probably, but I, would, I wouldn't know what it constitutes. Like, I can't think of it off the top of my head. But what? toxic masculinity in, like, this example is when Stupid. they're taught to, like, stray away from their emotions, like, not express them, keep it to yourself. Like, you're a man, don't be a p like, hold it in, like, don't cry. That's mm -hmm. what I mean, and I feel like that's when we... Her voice sounds like what a mothball would sound like. Like, does she have marbles stuck in her throat? <laughs> Honestly, I think it's a root of like a lot of problems, in, including that, because they just don't know how to express their feelings and a lot of stuff builds up and then they get scared like, oh, she might actually be a good girl. She might really heal me. But wait, like, no, I'm like not ready for that. And you I think that saying? and I think that is generational, like 
Mm. From the very beginning of time, men were the warriors, the knights, you know, the people fighting, and men or women were the gatherers, dainty gatherers, birth givers, you know, all that stuff. And and that really carries on because ideals and, you know, like, yeah, like ideals are passed down. Like, so your parents, obviously, who raise you are going to put their ideas on you and then it just it's like that effect what but okay so making zero percent sense fat none i'm gonna ask the table so do you guys believe in toxic masculinity just show of hands eric if you want to just put it okay we've all been done you guys because of what you said okay so if you believe in toxic masculinity then do you believe in toxic femininity yes Yes. let's show of hands again Okay, well, in that, just in that sentence right there, in that breath, if it's toxic femininity, toxic masculinity, then it's just toxic people, dude. You don't need to put the descriptor on the end of it. It's just toxic. I mean, at least you guys are consistent, but I just reject this idea of saying, of putting toxic before a term in the same way that it would be like, it might be sexist to say toxic masculinity or toxic femininity. It would be like, geez, I don't want to get canceled. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. Like, like, it's just stupid, dude. It's so dumb. Um, toxic masculinity, toxic femininity, mammy, mammy, mammy. Um, but Loki, did you have a good time today? Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. Makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.